It is Mailbag Monday, and that means I am answering your questions this week. A lot of questions about the Fantastic Four, Sinister Six, and oh yeah, we're going to do a giveaway. Before we get into all that, I do want to mention the sponsor of this video and of the giveaway, Clan HQ. What is Clan HQ, you may ask? Well, it is a brand new, fully featured messaging app, and it is free right now on the Android and iOS stores. It has all kind of features that can integrate with over 75 different games, including Marvel Strike Force. You have a fully featured chat with stickers, GIFs, photos, badges, and more. You have a notification setting so that you can tag people and see everyone that reads your messages. You can store your game data right in the app so anyone that wants to check out your entire roster, they can do it with just a click of a button. And that's really valuable, guys. If you're an alliance leader or you are someone that is looking for an alliance, yes, you could find it all right within Clan HQ. You could find the perfect match with just a few clicks. And because the game data is integrated with the app itself, you could show off things like your total collection power, your strongest team power, and you could show it off to anyone that wants it right in the app itself so if you want to learn more about clan hq check out the link in the description they're adding new features all the time guys it's really good stuff and if you want to be one of the first to use it make sure you check it out so make sure you check out clan hq guys some good stuff going on over there the link is in the description but if you're ready it is time to answer your questions so let's go smash it valley florida What up, Valley Maniacs? Valley Fine here. I am back. Welcome to the channel. It is Monday, and that means it's time to go into the mailbag and answer your questions. Did your question make the list this week? You're gonna have to watch to find out. I'm also doing a giveaway. I am drawing it in this video, so you're gonna have to watch to see if you want. Now, before we get into all the questions, and there is a lot of them, and I tried to fit in as many as I can, do you want to mention the sponsor of this video? The other sponsor of this video, BlueStacks. You could download and play Marvel Strike Force or any other game on your Android for free on your PC. If you click on the link, it supports the channel. There's also a link for Patreon if you want to support the channel that way. And oh, there's some cool Valley merch with the link to Tee Public in the description. So make sure you check that out. But without further ado, it is time to get to your questions. First question. What's better to farm for new people, Guardians or Punisher slash Miss Marvel Fenders? And I would say Guardians right now. Guardians gives you one of the better legendary characters in Star-Lord and Defenders doesn't really unlock anything. They're a good team, good teams for starters, but now that Sinister Six is fully farmable, or they're supposed to be fully farmable at least by the end of this week according to what was said in the uh, dev vlog. Uh, we should be getting them fully farmable and I think they're gonna be the first team that you go and farm. Our next question, Valley Fine, are you as shocked as I was to see the Invisible Woman requirements? No, the Sinister Six was a big rumor for a long time. It was a rumor that I didn't want to believe and it turned out to be true. Not exactly the worst thing though. Uh, it seems like Fox Nexus money grabbed to get to require the Sinister Six characters. Yeah, it, it is, and it kind of sucks for people that want to unlock her right away in the beginning. Uh, but if you look at the subsequent iterations of the event, and if you look at this event for newer players, not that bad when it comes to down the road, because now we got Sinister Six, and they can unlock two teams. The Wakandan team with Shuri, and this Fantastic Four team with the Invisible Woman. So I don't think this is the worst thing. Do you think, uh, even though they become farmable, do you think there's a real chance for free-to-play players to be able to recruit her? It depends how long you've been playing. If you've been playing for a while, you have a stack roster, and, you can, uh, and you're can and you doing good in Arena, you have a lot of resources built up. Yeah, I think it is. You're going to have to spend some cores to refresh some of the nodes, but I think you can. Now, if you're a newer player, free-to-play, I don't think this is meant to have people unlock her as a free-to-play player right off the bat if you haven't been playing for a while. Uh, that's not the worst thing, but it looks like you should be able to get her on a second iteration because... It looks like this team will become fully farmable. All right, next question. Now that the Fantastic Four kits have been released, what are your thoughts on how much of an impact they will have in war? Will they be worth investing into? I definitely think they're worth investing into. I think their kits are strong. I think they actually can be worth uh, usable in other game modes as well. If you replace Namor, Namor is what really makes him into that war team. But if you slot in somebody else that makes them 
uh, worthy in other game modes. I think just the Fantastic Four kit is well-rounded enough that they can be versatile in other game modes. So for War, yes, if you're using Namor, and are they worth investing in? Yes, I think they are as well. Next question, how long do you think we have to prepare for the Invisible Woman? What's my best guess? Uh, follow-up question or follow-up response was that they said late September. I don't recall Fox Next saying late September. Maybe they said it in something that I wasn't aware of, but I don't recall any official communication saying late September. But my best guess is in September. My best guess, though, is mid-September, not late September. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll see what happens when we get an official announcement if uh, one hasn't already been out there. All right, the next couple questions, they're both related to what you would do to replace invisible woman if you don't have her on that team what is related more in general and the next question is more related specifically to war offense and my answer for both of these questions is the same character and this character is who you probably would replace shuri with in the wakandans team Merc riot guard he has that defense up that he can apply to the rest of the team he has that taunt so he gives them that survivability and uh that's kind of what you're missing with out Invisible Woman is that survivability. So yeah, you're gonna need a tank. You're gonna need someone to really mitigate some damage from the team. And I think Merc Riot Guard is the one that uh, will do that for the Fantastic Four until you get the Invisible Woman. Next question, any word on if Sinister Six is still allowed for the legendary Shuri? Yes, they are. Next question, do you think using Sinister Six as an Invisible Woman unlocked while also having the Spider-Verse tag is setting a dangerous precedent for future legendary characters, giving new players a bypass measure to unlock legendary characters two for the price of one. Yes, I don't think it's a dangerous thing though. I think it's fully what they intended. They wanted people to spend the money up front on Sinister Six while also making them farmable. And I, I think the two for one is a good thing. I'd rather have newer players catch up to be at that mid game and late game stage rather than having them spend a lot of time in that new game phase as well so i think this is a good thing for the new players and i think it's good for the uh mid and end game players as well so I, I like it i don't think it's a dangerous precedent next question what's a character you wish you could refund the resources you spent on them so for this one let's go in game let's look at my roster now there's no character that i really regret because i've gotten use out of all characters but if i could refund one it would be this one right here night nurse now i invested in her a ways back when she was the best healer in the game not the best healer anymore i invested in her way back when she was kind of required for the raids raids don't really require her anymore so she, her usage has been way down for me i don't really use her a lot but she still has that power there so i put so i throw her on an ultron team but if i could have the resources back for her i would definitely uh do it with night nurse all right next question do you think fox next are releasing legendaries more often because it seems We've had Magneto, then Star-Lord in such a short period. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and adding to that, uh, Fury as well, because Fury came back a little bit before Magneto. So they're definitely doing that. The real question, though, is why? And I am not sure. Leave your best tinfoil hat conspiracy theories on why these legendary events are coming back so often. Maybe it's something that just, just been so busy they forgot to put them in, like, a regular cadence. But I'm not sure why. I think that's a real question, though. But yeah, they definitely are coming back way more often than before. All right, next question. When do you think the next Shuri event will be? I haven't seen anything in the data mines. I haven't seen any rumors or anything about legendary Shuri coming back. Uh, my guess, just off the top of my head, based on no evidence whatsoever, just kind of gut feeling. I'd say early September for legendary Shuri. Uh, I don't know. Let me let me hear your guesses down below, guys, because my guesses are as good as yours on this one. All right, next question. If you could only level one team, what would it be and why? So for the why, I'm going to talk about that first because I definitely want a team that I could use in all game modes. Maybe not the best in every single game mode, but they'd be very, very good in all the game modes. And for that, I got to use a team that has some legendary characters, has some harder to farm characters, and has Ultron. So it's going to be the BKE or BKT, whatever you want to call this team. It's going to be Star-Lord, Rocket, Ultron, Minerva, and Groot. That's the team I would use. And the reason why, one of the best, if not the best raid team. When I when Ultima 7 was here, these guys did very well on Ultima 7. So that would be uh, a great mood for them. They could win on 8.3 in Blitz, so very good in Blitz, very good in War, and they're, they'll lose against the meta teams in Arena, but they'll do pretty good in Arena and keep me maybe at least in the top 250 or so. I don't know, but that that would be 
the team that I would use. The uh, BKE minus Thanos and adding in Ultra. Next question, do you think they should add more campaign notes to other campaigns or possibly new campaigns? Yes, yes, definitely. The more, the better, the more content in the game, as long as it's not uh, something that's super grindy, I would be in favor of. And this would give us a chance to add more characters to nodes. So definitely be in favor of more nodes and more campaigns. Next question, two Red Star Drax or two Red Star Vision for Tech Nerva Arena Defense. So my first thoughts on Arena Defense is that it's, it, from what I've seen, it doesn't matter too much because I know with my offense team, I could beat most arena defense teams unless that collection power is way super high but uh, for so for me arena defense doesn't matter if i had to pick between these two all things being equal i would say vision for the arena defense to round out that team because most of that team is tech and you're giving defense up uh that being said when do you decide on high red stars versus using the worst character and in that case, it would really depend on their power level. So if their power level is absurdly, insanely high over the rest of your team, so if the rest of your arena teams is maybe 40k each, and then you got someone at 60k or 70k, if they're a decent character, yeah, put them in, even if they're not as good as another synergized character. But if they're all around the same power level, use the better character and don't go for the stars. That's kind of where I'm at. They, they, need, a, they need a lot of power if they're going to justify me using them in arena uh next question do you think the raid store the war store needs less characters or more slots for characters to help resolve the rng issue so i don't think less characters in there would fully resolve the le the rng issue because that just means there's less farmable characters so we definitely would need more slots i think right now with the way the game is and all the characters that are in the store i think six characters right now in the raid store and in the war store would be a good compromise. I know Fox Next doesn't want to make them all available, but I think having six there with all the characters that have been added since the game's launch, I think that would be a fair compromise. So yeah, I definitely more slots, not more, uh, not less characters. Our next question, what is the chance Shocker's node is in the next Nexus chapter? Uh, I think it's not gonna be a next Nexus chapter. I think it's gonna be in a chapter that's farmable right now and the reason for that is when they released the statement about uh, the invisible moment last week they said that the uh, sinister six would be farmable next week which is this week as of me recording this so i think it's going to be in a current uh, note so that newer players can go after uh this shocker my question is how are you doing i know you've got a lot of stuff going on you're doing an awesome job keep up the great videos well thank you scotty 114 i'm actually doing really well i think uh, you know everybody has times that they have ups they have downs and uh, I think for me at least, it's a lot, of, a lot of it has to do with perception because over time we're gonna get a lot of the same events happening, good things, bad things, and a lot of it has to do with, or a lot of uh, our feelings has to do with uh, how we perceive these things. So good, bad, it's all how you perceive it, or that's, that's how I've, uh, I'm looking at a lot of things. And with that, you know, things are going well. So I hope you're doing well as well. I hope everybody out there is doing well that is watching this video is doing well as well, so. Good stuff. Uh, next question. Do you refresh the stores to get... Next question. Did you refresh the stores to get your tunes to gear 13 for Fear of the Darkness? And follow-up question. What are tunes? So let me answer that one first. Basically, tunes is just kind of a slang and nickname for the characters in the game. I think it came from cartoons back in the game is where you're shorting it. Although I could be wrong in that. Let me know in the comments where it came from, guys. But basically, it's your characters. Did you refresh the stores to get them to gear 13 for Fear of the Darkness? Yes. I was refreshing every single 300 or 50 core uh, refresh that I could on the stores. So six per day for about two months. And that was a lot of cores. I had a bunch of cores saved up knowing I would do that. And by the end, even with arena wins and the cores that we'll get for various bugs and different things, it was still very, very low to end. So by the time it was over, I was very, very happy and it was Pain, um, I don't want to say painful. It, it was not fun farming for Ultron and refreshing these nodes, but it is worth it. He is a very good character, so th that's what I did. Yes, I did refresh the nodes. Our next question, Valley Flying, can you give us newer players, 6 to 11 month players, pointers for Enter the Darkness, and maybe another question, how can you most efficiently gain orange gear, mats, and T4 abilities? So the second part of the question, get in a good alliance. Find an alliance that you can get into that matches where you are in terms of collection power 
And as far as your mindset, I think that's very important because if you're someone that goes hard, you don't want to be aligned with people that are very casual. And if you're casual, you don't want to be going in an alliance with someone that goes in an alliance that goes very hard. So find an alliance that matches your power and with your mindset. And that is the best way to get these orange gear and the T4 abilities. And as far as enter the darkness, using the best team, uh, the best characters that you have at six stars, ideally you would want to bring someone that has synergy and is a good raid team, maybe like defenders or uh, shield or any other team that works very well for you in raids. That is who will work very well in enter the darkness. Now, with that said, if you have some six star characters that you want to just bring in, they're not ideal. They're not the best. Start it. There's no time requirement. You can do a little bit each day, chip away at it, and then eventually you'll get the resources, the gear. Eventually you will be able to beat that thing. But uh, if you're looking just for the best team, any team that works well in the raids will work very well in Enter the Darkness. Next question. Do you think future legendary events will require new characters that hardly anybody has at a decent star level? Yes. I think that's exactly the point that these developers have in mind when they bring these legendary uh, events around. They want people to panic farm. They want people to get these new shiny characters. So I think that that is uh, what they want to do. Our next question. Hi, Valley. I've already finished Fear the Darkness. Want to know if you still think it's worth upgrading Starlord to tier 13. Yes, definitely. He's a great raid character. Great in Blitz. Great in every mode. So yeah, upgrade, upgrade Starlord, especially on that team that you use for Fear the Darkness. Next question. Now, this is late in the game for some. But do you think it's a better idea to save up and cash in on the Red Star Orb credits to buy random characters or roll the dice for another Red Star Orb? And I think in most cases, it's best for another Red Star Orb, except for characters that you use a lot that don't have a lot of Red Stars or don't have any Red Stars on. So uh, most of the time for the Elite Fours, I'm always spending those on the Orbs. Uh, for the Elite Fives, once in a while I'll open an Orb, once in a while I will use it in the store. Uh, but yeah, for me, Drax, Vision, I use those characters a lot, and neither of them have any red stars on them for a long, long time, and finally saw them in the store, so I'm gonna get them at least to two red stars. Didn't make huge difference in terms of the stats, but visually, I thought it looked a little better for me, but yeah, if, if there's a character you use a lot, it is good to invest in their red stars and build them up so you could have more power on that team. Uh, but in other any other cases, it's probably worth just uh, waiting for the orbs and seeing if you get lucky with that. All right, next question. Trying to build an arena defense team around my Ultron was wondering what recommendations you might have to go with him. I was also thinking of dumping resources into Rhino, putting him on the team to counter Magneto. Mostly using high level taunts with him right now. So for that, I would say no, Rhino's not a great pick because if someone is using Magneto on your team, they could just switch out another character to counter your defensive team. I think uh, defense is not a huge area of importance for me, at least in arena right now, because I know with my team, and this is my team right here, I could beat pretty much any arena defensive team if uh, the collection power is not too insane of a difference. But yeah, I, and I use this exact same team on offense and on defense. It holds okay. I mean, in my shard, it's pretty competitive, so I could be in single digits and move all the way down to out of the top 50. Uh, if I'm not watching it. So I got to constantly play this. But uh, yeah, I mean, defense uh, defense has never really mattered to me because I know how I can beat a lot of defenses. And I figure everybody else can beat my team as well. So uh, yeah, but definitely don't build Rhino for that because you could just take Magneto on and use a different team on offense. Next question. Do you think that Fox next should introduce a mechanic to trade items for gold? Yes, definitely. Next question, would love to see an updated store shopping guide on your YouTube channel. Any chance you'll make one soon? Definitely want to make one. I don't know about soon, because Sino and I have been talking about it for a while. It's been requested for a while. It's one of our OG collab videos that we did about the short store shopping guide. Uh, I don't know, I might have to go on it solo. I'll talk to him next time we record a news video and see what he thinks about that. I know he's talked about just me doing a solo a while back, but yeah, just our schedules just haven't been able to line up except for the uh, news reports and the occasional whale wars. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I definitely, it's definitely something that's been on the back burner for a long, long time. So yeah, hopefully soon. Uh, next question, Valley Flying. What would you think of an anti summons debuff and anti res debuff in the future? I think it would be awesome. I think uh, more mechanics like that uh, to counter specific characters are cool. Uh, I think the more mechanics we could have in the game, the better, because it makes. Uh, us that like theorycrafting 
it makes us have to think a lot more and uh, build up to different teams. So yeah, I would, I would like that. And last question, did I win the giveaway? No, you didn't. The reason is because I haven't drawn it yet, but let's go do that right now. All right, so we're gonna pick winners. We got two winners, two $10 gift cards. You let me know if you win, if you want an iTunes or a Google Play card. This is sponsored by Clan HQ. So shout out to those guys and of course, you need to be a subscriber and leave a comment on the last video to enter. There are some unique comments. So this, what this site does is it filters out the unique comments. We have 365 at the time of me doing the drawing. So good luck guys, everybody that entered. We are going to do this two times. And the first winner is, uh, and the winner of the first card is, the Gunther 30. Sinister 6 isn't too bad of an unlock path, I suppose, in the long run, especially if they make them farmable. Yes, they are making them farmable this week, uh, according to what they've said. I really hope Doc Ock would come to the game now. Yeah, that would be cool. That, to round out that Sinister 6 so we could use uh, Green Goblin on one squad instead of both of the Spider-Verse and Sinister 6 squads. All right, next winner. Congratulations, Gunther. Leave a comment on this video and tell me what card you want, Google Play or iTunes. Again, thanks to Clan HQ for this. We'll start doing one more winner. And the next winner on this video is Trap Geeks. Geeks won't be getting her the first or second row, and I am sorry to hear about that, but uh, hopefully we'll be getting her subsequently, and hopefully your team is doing good. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's all about the fun. So hopefully you're having fun in the game. Trap Geeks, again, leave a comment for me in this video so I can verify your ID, and then uh, we will find a way to reach out to each other after that. Let me know if you want a Google Play or iTunes, guys. All right, and that is it for this video, guys. Uh, if you did not win, we are doing more giveaways on this channel this month, all sponsored by Clan HQ, guys. So thank you again to Clan HQ. Check out some of my other links. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Share this with all of your friends. Helps the channel and smash on that notification bell. Join the notification squad. And yes, obviously hit that thumbs up for that like. And I will see you guys next time. I'm on Instagram at Valley Flying. Hulk fist bump, Valley Flying. Out!